thank you all for your patience very much. Um, let's, um, we have a, a bunch of different things to do today. Thanks for braving the elements to get here. Um, and we're not quite all here, but that's okay. We've got to see those of you who are. Um, so a lot of you may already know me, and you probably know me as Mr. Yenzer, and I still answer to Mr. Yenzer. That's a perfectly acceptable thing to call me. That is my last name, Yenzer. But um, I'm also, they've changed the status of the um, non-ordained rostered leaders in the church, like myself, my wife, lots of us who work for the church who are not ordained, like, like a pastor. And so I'm also Deacon Tom. So if you hear me called Deacon Tom, that's me too. And you can call me Deacon Tom or Mr. Yenzer. I like to say you can call me anything except late for dinner. Good. Couple, uh, couple of dads got that dad joke. Thank you very much, dads. Okay. So, now we have a brand new pastor here at Tobin. So let me introduce to you Pastor Katie, Pastor Katie Lyon. And do you want to just say a few words of welcome to our yeah. group? Welcome, kids and parents. Um, I'm happy to, to be working with you and uh, to be on this journey together. I know Deacon Tom has some great stuff planned for you. And I, I snuck a little peek that today you're going to be talking partly about baptism. And I just wanted to give you a little story about me that I was baptized not as a baby. I was nine years old. Any of you not, nine? Any of you kids? Nine. So I was your age when I was baptized. That means I remember my baptism. And maybe some people, maybe some of you were baptized late or you know people that weren't baptized. And I say any time is a good time to be baptized. So especially today on the baptism of our Lord, I know that baptisms come in all shapes and sizes. We have two different ones here and, and all sorts of things. But I was a little latecomer into the Lutheran church and, and then studied there and, and liked church so much that I wanted to be able to lead and, and be a pastor in the church. And I've been ordained since 2004. And I've lived here in the Reading area since then and have been a pastor in different churches throughout this synod. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. This today is my official first Sunday. I've been with you sometime throughout these last several months just as a supply. But now I get to be your pastor. If you have any questions or if there are certain things you want me to pray for or you have doubts, whatever, know that that my door is open, you can come to me with anything, no, no question is too silly, and I'm just excited to, to see all that will happen in the future with us together. So thank you. Great, thanks. Um, so let me see who of you are here. We're not all here. Just find a pencil. There we go. So I see Lincoln back there. Wave at me, Lincoln. Thanks, okay. And I'm sure Julia was here someplace. Yeah, there you are. Okay, great. And Tucker's right here. Tucker, we have two Tuckers. So Tucker Bratton is here, but Tucker Lowell, I don't see the Lowell's. No Lowell's, right? Okay. Is Carter here? Oh, hi, Carter. How about Ben? Back there, good, Ben. Sadie, I saw. There you are. Addison. No? And no Oliver, no Lowell's. Maddie's here. There we go. And not Jackson. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of 12. There's 12 of us in all, usually. But this will work just fine. So let's just see, just, so just for the kids who are community class kids, okay? Um, I'm going to ask you some things, and I want you to stand up if you fit what I'm asking. You'll see what I mean. Like, for instance, anyone who's in second grade right now, stand up. Second grade, stand up. Okay? Okay, it's three, yep. Yeah. So, stand up if you're in a higher grade than second grade. Awesome. Okay? So, if you're in, no, nope, stay standing. Stay standing. If you're in third grade, sit down. And if you're in fourth grade, sit down. There we go. So we got second, third, and fourth graders. That almost always happens every year. That's great. Okay. Stand up if you go to Wyoming Missing School District. 
Why are you missing? Stand up if you're in. Why are you missing? Got one, two, three. Three. Why are you missing? Okay. Okay. So you can sit down. Stand up if you're in Wilson. Any Wilsons? Two Wilsons. Good. Three. Oh, sorry. I can see a second there back there. So yeah, good. Three Wilsons. So, I have two. so there's two more left. Let me see if I can. Yes. Governor Mifflin's. No, Governor Mifflin's. Okay. Stand up if you don't go to Wilson or Governor Mifflin or why you're missing. Just Carter? Uh, yeah, Carter, right? Everybody else was up. Carter, which, what district are you in? School Kill Valley. You know what? It would have been my next guess. And Oliver, Oliver Lord's coming to School Kill Valley, too. Okay? Great. Um, stand up if you don't have any brothers or sisters. Stand up if you don't have any brothers or sisters. Okay? Ben, back there, is an only child. Good. Stand up if you have one brother or sister. Okay, bunch have one. Stand up if you have more than one brother or sister. Great. Julia, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Three, right? I knew that, good, very good, okay. Good job, okay. Stand up if you like pizza. If you like pizza, stand up. Uh, there's always one, all right? Yeah, one or two. Okay, good. Stand up if you like French fries. Okay, oh, we still got a few, okay. Oh, come on now, come on, gang. See if we can get 100%. Stand up if you like ice cream. Ice cream. Did we get everybody? All right, ice cream is like my favorite food, so. I know it's bad for you, but it's so good. All right, sit down. Stand up. One last time, stand up if you've got everything you wanted for Christmas. Hmm? Ah, interesting. All right. Very good. All right. All right. So that's just to get to know you. So I can get to know you a little bit better, and you can get to know each other a little bit better. You can see that we come from all different schools. We're not in the same grade. We have all different kinds of families. But we're all together to talk together for the next three weeks about communion and what communion is and why it's so important. So we're going to start right now by watching a video about communion um, and uh, about a little girl named Sarah who's about your age. Okay? So um, enjoy this video. Hello, Sarah. Hi. I heard it won't be long before you start receiving Holy Communion at church. Is that true? Yep. I see. Now, do you know why we take communion? No. Well, I have a book that you might find helpful. Mm, okay. Sorry, it's to your left. Oh. Is this a book about Jesus? Well, yes. That's because communion is all about Jesus. And it's also about someone else. Who? You. That's why this book is called A Place for You. Do you remember the story of how Jesus entered the world? Yeah, Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room in the inn. And his mom Mary was there, and Joseph, and some horses, and a donkey, and some sheep, and some chickens, and some cows, and some goats, and some turtle doves. Oh, and a cow. That's right. Jesus arrived as a little baby just like you. And Jesus was a kid, just like you. And he ate a very special meal as well. Communion? No, it was a special Jewish meal called Passover. Mother, why do I do this? How is this night different from all other nights? To remember that God saved our people. Now, when Jesus grew up, he had a very big job to do. Do you know what that job was, Sarah? Carpentry? Well, yes. But he had an even bigger job given to him by God. Jesus was sent to show that God loves everybody. Really? Everybody? Everybody in the whole world. Um, there's more people in the world than in that picture. Well, you'll just have to use your imagination for the rest of it. Yeah, I guess so. And while you're imagining Jesus loving everyone, don't forget to include someone very important. Uh, who? You, Sarah. Jesus showed God's love in many ways. He welcomed children. 
Let the little children come to me. <laughs> he told stories about love. There was a man who had two sons. He talked about love. Love and do good to others, even those who hate you. Jesus made friends with people who were hated, made fun of, and not included. This made some people upset. Ugh, he's a Samaritan. Yuck, it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Blessed are the poor. They also didn't like when he preached God's love for the poor and hungry. <gasps> the poor? <laughs> or when he healed people. You are made well. I can't believe you just did that. And he forgave sinners. Your sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. He can't do that. I can't, can't, can't he do that. Well, he just did it. Ugh, they sure were crabby. Very crabby. Yeah, I get crabby sometimes. We all do. But why are they upset with Jesus for loving everyone? Well, because they thought God only loves some people. I'm upset! He makes me angry. He likes them. I don't like him. So, when did people start taking communion? We're getting to that. In Jesus' time, eating dinner with someone was very special. You are my friend. I want us all to be friends for the rest of our lives. Please pass the bread. Eating together was a way of saying to another person, I love you. Jesus ate with all kinds of people, young and old, rich and poor, people who were considered good, and people who were considered bad. Eating with Jesus looks like fun. Well, you'd be invited too, Sarah. I would? Sure. There's room for everyone at Jesus' table. Jesus should not eat with bad people. I agree. He should only eat with good people like us. Who did they think were bad people? Well, people like Mr. Zacchaeus. He collected tax money for those who were in charge. People called him a bad person because he cheated them. Mr. Zacchaeus collected more money than he was supposed to, and he felt very rich. One day, Jesus saw Mr. Zacchaeus sitting in a sycamore tree. Oh yeah, he was trying to see Jesus. <laughs> yes, and then in front of everyone, Jesus called out to Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. For I must stay at your house today. Ah! After that, Jesus went to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Zacchaeus for dinner. By having dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Zacchaeus, Jesus was telling them, You are my friends, and you are part of God's family. Mr. Zacchaeus was so happy Jesus loved him that he returned the extra money he'd taken. He also gave half of everything he owned to the poor. Half of everything? That's a lot of giving. Jesus loves making big things happen. Who's that? That? Oh, his character we made up who wants to learn more about Jesus. Hey, so do I. So did a lot of people. In fact, one day when Jesus was teaching about God's love, over 5,000 people came to listen. But you know what's funny about people, Sarah? They have sparkles. Well, yes, that is pretty funny. But in this story, it's that people were so excited to see Jesus that they apparently forgot to bring their lunch. Or maybe they didn't have a lunch to bring, but they all started to get hungry. Very So, did they order pizza? They didn't have phones or pizza or delivery back then. What? No pizza? Yeah, it was a simpler time. What did they do? There was a little bit of fish and bread, but not nearly enough to feed 5,000 people. However, when Jesus gave thanks to God and started to share the food, suddenly there was enough for everyone. All had enough to eat. No one was left out, which made almost everyone very happy. Almost everyone? Who? Oh, I know. The crabby people didn't like it. Some of these people don't deserve free food. I am really upset. Disgusting. Completely and utterly disgusting. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yes, because he... That's right, because Jesus met him. And what did they do together? What did they do together? Carter. They ate together, right. They had a meal together. Right, so that meal was an important part of that. That was showing Zacchaeus that Jesus loved him even though everybody else didn't like him because he wasn't doing very good things. And it made him change. He changed. Good. Then the next meal that the, that the um, video talked about was a meal with lots and lots of people. Do you remember that one? Okay. All right, Ben, what do you remember? That's right. There were five, you got it exactly right, Ben. There were 5,000 people there, it says in the Bible, and there was only a tiny little bit of food. But when Jesus passed it out, it turned out to be enough for everybody. And that we call that a miracle. But um, we remember that in, when we have communion, there's always enough for everybody. Now, I think it's about time for um, those of us who are a little younger, not the adults, to get up and move around a little bit. So let's see, I have a little message about those two stories. And I put the letters on some colored papers, squares of colored paper, which I've hidden around the room, okay? If you were being really careful and watching me, you saw me do it when, we, when you first came in. But if not, you'll just have to look, okay? The squares are about this big, they're all different colors, and they have letters on one side, big letters, and on the other side they have little numbers. So what I want you to do is go find those, and you can get one or two, give, you can't have three because you only have two hands, because we're holding those letters up to share with each other. Go ahead and look for them, and we're going to get in line in order, up front from one up to number 13, I think is the highest number. So start looking around and see if you can find them. If they're in this room and you don't have to open anything or touch anything, or you can, they're just in the room. And they're square, they're colored squares of paper. And you can't miss them. I thought. All right, there we go. No, it's not on me. It's on, it's, they're mostly on the floor. Well, we got one. Good job, keep looking. See if you can find another one. Now don't touch anything. No, no, they're big pieces of paper. Lincoln, hold up your paper. They're all that size. Some are different colors, but they're all that size. Oh, you got two. Okay. Okay. Well, if you have two, you can't have you can't have a third one. So you're good. You're good. But if you want to look, if you want to help look for some more, you can you can look for someone and give them to other people. Oh, there's one. Let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Find any of them. Oh, go. Ben might have found some more. Go, girls, go on over to Ben. See if he has some more over there. Two. Okay? I think we're missing two more. Go. 
Go for it. See if you can find two more. Okay. Oh, did we get another one? All right, good one. One more. And the last one, all right. Now, come on down here. Now, who is number one? Find number one. Who's number one? On the back. On the back of your page. Okay, so, Tucker, who is number two? Okay, so give your number two, Tucker, you give yours to Julia, right? Julia. You give, he's gonna have one and two. Okay, you, you, you can have these. Who is three? Okay, come on over here, Sadie, three. And who is four? No, you're just gonna hold them for now. Put one in the sand and two in the sand. Put three in the sand. And then who is four? Give me four, and I'll give you that one. Okay, okay, that's yours. You stand next to Tucker, that's right, right there. Okay, who is one, two, three, four, five? Five, good. And then who is six? Okay, switch you. There's six, seven. Who is seven? Okay, come here to your next seven. And who is eight? You got it, you're good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where's nine? Oh, you have nine. Where, what happened to, wait, what happened to? You have one and two, three, four. Who, where's five? Five. No, no, you're fine, come over here. Put five in his hand. And six and nine, and seven, eight, nine. Who's ten? You have ten. Okay, I'll tell you what. You take nine and ten. And you have eleven, and you have twelve. You, you can keep, you, you go there with eleven, and then with the other, with the other side of it. And here's thirteen, Lincoln. Put the other hand though. All right. Yeah. yeah, no, wait, no. Now, let's see, parents, can we read it? So, louder, for them to hear? All are welcome, that's what you got there. You got all are welcome. Good job, all right? You can just go back to your seats. You can keep those there, put them on the thing there if you don't want them. So the message is, at communion, everybody is, even people like Zacchaeus, even when there's so many people, you think there can't be enough of them, all are welcome at communion. Oh, I did have a clicker here. Let's just, that's right, after all that. So there's a picture of everybody gathered at Thanksgiving. This is Jesus eating with Zacchaeus. There's another picture. There was a picture in the video of, the, of feeding the 5,000 people. Here's another picture. And all are well. Okay? And then finally, here's a picture of the very first communion. We're gonna talk more about this next week, okay? This is sometimes called the Last Supper. It's Jesus and his friends, sometimes called the disciples, all gathered together for a special meal that we'll talk about some more next week. And Jesus said at this meal, here's a little, little preview of next week. Whenever you share this bread and cup, the cup of wine, I will be with you, feeding you, loving you, and forgiving you. So Jesus promised that 
he would always be with us in this meal is really important. Okay? And we also, they also talked in the video about a book. The book is called A Place For You. I have one for everybody, but I'm not going to give them to you yet today because we'll use them in class perhaps next week. Next week, we'll come here for a video, but then we'll go into a classroom or to, to look at our, at our books and to do a craft project, okay? And parents, you do not have to stay next week. You're welcome to hang around, but you, if you, can, you can just come back and you can go get a coffee or something and come back. Um, to pick the kids up the next two weeks, okay? Um, now, in the time that we have remaining, I have a few more things that I want to do. So, the next thing that I want to do is a taste test, okay? So, if, so raise your hand if you have already received communion here or someplace else. Raise your hand. Okay, so some of you have, okay, raise your hand if you never have received communion before. This is going to be your first time. Couple, okay, all right, so here's what we're going to do. So some of you might know about what this tastes like, but we're going to take some tastes so you're not surprised at the end of the month with what things taste like. So. Um, is any, oh, I forgot about this, does anybody here need to be gluten-free? Do I have anybody here who's gluten-free? Great, okay, so then I have the gluten wafers, the regular wafers, here for you to try. So, instead of, uh, sometimes here at Atonement, we like to use bread for communion, but right now with the pandemic, notice we're all wearing face masks and we're still distancing and all that annoying stuff, but we're also just using a tiny piece of wafer, okay? It is bread, it doesn't look much like bread, and it doesn't taste much like bread. So it sort of tastes like nothing, okay? So, yeah, so I want to, I'm going to go um, put some hand sanitizer on my hands, and then I'd like you to come up and just eat. This is not blessed, so you're not getting communion today from me. I can't do communion, I'm not ordained. But you get a, just a taste of what the bread part of communion is going to be like. Let's do the bread part first, and then we'll talk about the wine, except that I need this hand sanitizer, which I think is someplace nearby. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so when you come up, let's practice how you're going to get this bread. So there's, yes, look, look Tucker's got, got it down. You're going to make a little, I was trying to make a little manger, like, but if you just make a little cup with your hands, or one hand is fine too. But don't go, don't, no, no little bird pecks, okay? That's not the way to do it. And then you let the pastor or the communion assistant drop the wafer into your hands. So come on, come on up this way. Tuck her up to me first. Come on over this way and then come back to your seats. And, yep. And the person who gives you the wafer will say, body of Christ given for you. And do you know what you should say back? You should say, amen. It means like, yes, I agree, yes, that's right, okay? Like, no, like, not amen, like, amen, like, um, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. A-M-E-N, amen. Or amen, you can say amen too. Can you say that? Amen. <laughs> so the body of Christ given for you, say amen. And then you pull you, yep, and then you just stick that in. And we're going to do wine in a minute. We're going to do them separate. Okay? Body of Christ given for you. Amen. Okay. Put a hand up. Body of Christ given for you. You guys are doing great. Body of Christ given for you. Perfect. Body of Christ given for you. 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Great. Stick that in your mouth and uh, chew it up. It's delicious, right? It's even, it's almost as good as pumpkin pie with whipped cream on, right? Yeah, not too exciting, okay? Not too exciting tasty. And one day maybe we'll be using actual bread again. Who knows? But that's, that's what we're using right now. So that's what we'll be using on January 30th when you receive communion um, with the whole congregation. Now, um, if you, you do not have to do this, okay? And parents, you can help decide. I don't have any glasses of grape juice because guess what? You all know what grape juice tastes like, right? Everybody here has had grape juice. If you, if, you, if you want grape juice, that's always an option here. The grape juice glasses are sort of pinkish or purplish color. So that's how you can tell which ones are the grape juice. The clear glasses, like these, have a little tiny sip of wine in them. Now, would anybody like to taste the wine? This is your chance to taste the wine. You don't have to, but if you want to give it a try, come up and make a line over here behind Tucker again. Now, I just have a basket here. Um, this is the time to get your phones out and watch their faces, by the way, sometimes this is good. Um, uh, you don't have to drink it all if you don't like it, but you do have to put anything that you don't drink and the glass, the plastic cup, in the basket, okay? Now this time, you can just pick out the glass yourself. And when you do that, the person's going to say, the blood of Christ shed for you. And then you say, yes, you got it. Okay, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take one of that, pull your mask down, take a little sip. If you like it, drink it all. If not, yeah, there you go. The blood of Christ shed for you. And you pull your mask down. Take a little sip. Okay. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Good. Blood of Christ shed for you. 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 They all tried it, didn't they? Good job. Okay, so let me ask. <laughs> we need a lot of water there. How many of you liked the wine? How many of you liked the wine? I got a couple. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. Before we have communion on January 30th, or if you even want to come... If you're coming to worship and receiving communion before January 30th, it's good to decide ahead of time. Decide with mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, whoever you're with, if you're going to take wine or grape juice. Don't get to the front and then not know, okay? Decide in your seat. I'm, I'm good. And it doesn't matter which one you take. Both are communion. Both are completely... Um, you get in the same communion, okay? And then... So you can try either one, okay? And that, that'll be up to you and your parents to decide how you're going to do that, okay? Do you have any questions about that, any of that? You feel like <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Tucker. That was, that, was, that was important to share. Good, good. I have, um, I have two more things to go over with you before you leave. But actually, three more things, guys. I want to talk to your parents for just a minute before we do two more things, two more little housekeeping things, and then we'll be done for today. Parents, number one, thank you so much for bringing your children here for these classes of instruction and for worship and for you know to be a part of this congregation in this way. Um, by doing that, you are helping to fill fulfill the baptismal promises that you made when your child was baptized, where, here or wherever that might have been, um, uh, which was 
you know, to see to their faith life and their spiritual life. And that's what you're doing right now. And so I can't thank you enough for taking this time um, to, to be here with your kids. And I encourage you to continue um, to come to worship here or, or anywhere um, and continue to have, um, as we take care of our children's physical needs and emotional needs and academic needs, don't forget their spiritual needs too. They're just as important. And thanks for doing that today um, and for being part of this program. So I just wanted to say that before we go any further. Now, two little things that you can still do for next time. Okay, so on January 3rd, we have opportunity for the communion kids, students, to be a part of worship by reading a little part of a lesson or a, a little part of a prayer. You don't have to do that. If you're not somebody comfortable with reading in front, you'll have a microphone. Miss Melissa, who you'll meet next week if you don't know her already, will be here to help with that. She'll be right next to you. Um, but lots of kids like to do that. If you're learning to read, we promise it'll be short, just a sentence or two, and easy, um, easy words. And we'll practice um, the next couple weeks as well. But I need to know how many kids want to do that so that I can um, assign the readings, okay? So, what you can do is, I have um, a sign up for readers in worship, so I'm going to give this to Brandon's and then you guys can pass that around before you leave. Make sure you get this if you would like to read in worship, okay? Now, not everybody's here today, so if you don't, if you're not sure today, you don't have to sign up today because I'm going to have to ask the others who aren't here. But we want to be able to practice next week, so we want to get, so even if you don't know today, then email me in the next couple days. You'll get an email, because I'll send out something to everybody, those who are here as well, to remind them about this. So there's that. And then, the other thing is, I don't think I made copies. Well, all right, that's okay. We'll do, this. We'll do that by email as well. Okay, so we are going to talk more about baptism in two weeks. But I thought what would be really fun this year, because we have the screens, is if you, instead of bringing, sometimes we've asked um, families to bring in a photograph of when, from when this, the kids were baptized, to share and to what, see their baby pictures or, or however old they were, like Pastor Katie was nine when she was baptized. If this year we're going to do that um, electronically, so I would, if you can, parents, this is your homework. If you can find a picture, if you have a picture of baptism of, or, you know, or be right before or after, you know, that kind of thing, you know, whatever you have, it doesn't have to look like this where it's the actual moment of baptism. Um, you'd like to take pictures afterwards. Send me your best photo electronically to my email, and then I'll put them together on a slideshow and we'll look at the kids' uh, baptisms. That'll be fun, okay? So I also have a little baptism homework for everybody, and I noticed that I did not make co paper copies, but you know what's going to be easier? I'm going to send you an electronic copy of this um, tomorrow or early in the week. And the due date for this is not next Sunday, but the following Sunday, when we talk more about baptism. Okay? And it's looking for information like, where were you baptized? How old were you when you were baptized? Um, who baptized you? Um, those kind of questions. Okay? Uh, and that gives you a chance to talk together as a family about your baptism. Um, if, for some, if for some reason anyone here is not baptized, by the way, um, uh, sometimes that's the case, and that's fine too, but then just um, tell me, you know, let me know that privately at some point and we can talk about that, okay? Let's see. It is almost noon. You have been very patient. Um, does anybody have any questions? Thank you all so much again for coming. Kids, thanks for your help and your, and your good participation. And next week, we'll meet Miss Melissa, we'll watch another part of the video, and we'll start a little craft project. Um, and learn more about that last supper. Okay? Do you have a question, Tucker?
The kids have no homework. Really, it's really the parents who have homework. I know. What can I say? All right. Thanks. I'm, I'll hang around if you have any other questions. You can ask me. Thank you so much, and see you next time.